Today's training will be on wireless technology. We will introduce wireless technology and data acquisition and will go over various wireless technologies including Zigbee, RF, cellular, Wi-Fi, and infrared. We will also discuss how SCADA software on a computer can be used for control and monitoring over wireless networks. Wireless communication is the process of transferring information between two or more points that are not physically connected. Wireless networks help with a clean installation for applications where physical cables are inconvenient, like in factories, buildings, and remote monitoring applications. They also help with mobile applications where wires would be inconvenient when attached to moving objects like vehicles. Data acquisition is the process of sampling real-world physical conditions like temperature, pressure, and tank levels, and the conversion of the resulting samples into digital numeric values that can be manipulated by a computer or controller. You may want to monitor things like methane gas levels and temperature at a landfill. With wireless communication products, you can set up applications so you can see the data from a landfill from a remote location, like at your home or office. Different kinds of information can be retrieved from remote applications like the status of control panel doors being opened or closed, gas, and water levels. Wireless data acquisition allows for inputs and outputs like temperature, switches, fans, and buttons from sensors to be monitored and controlled wirelessly over different networks. Zigbee is a wireless specification that operates over the 2.4 GHz band. It was designed to create personal area networks with low data rates and uses small, low-powered radios. Zigbee devices are set up with a free software utility and can communicate up to 700 meters. Our devices that follow the Zigbee Alliance standard, so they can be used with other vendor devices that also follow the Zigbee Alliance standard. Our Zigbee products support Modbus RTU communication. With Zigbee communication, the converters act as a repeater and they repeat the signal on to the next node in the network. Zigbee supports many flexible topologies like cluster, where nodes are arranged around the host converter in little bunches, mesh, where the host coordinator is at one end, or star, where the host coordinator is in the middle. Each Zigbee network has one RF channel and PAN ID so the devices can be in the same network. Each node has a unique node ID to differentiate each device from the others on the network. Each network has one host converter which coordinates the communication path over the network. Zigbee networks can have many slave converters or slave I.O. modules. We are helping customers with food traceability systems like using Zigbee converters for data collection and analysis of chickens weight and age over time. Chickens stroll around the coop and each chicken has an RFID tag on its foot. As the chickens walk around they randomly step on scales that are installed in the coop. The chickens ID, birth weight, and weight data is sent wirelessly from the chicken coop to a control center that is 700 meters away. Zigbee wireless I.O. modules can communicate wirelessly over Modbus RTU protocol. The host converter can be connected to a PC or controller like our touchscreen PLCs, UPAC embedded controllers, or PAC controllers. The program on the PC or controller can communicate with the Zigbee I.O. modules as if they were directly connected. With the I.O. pairing option, no host converter is needed so the input on one can trigger the output on another in a standalone application. Zigbee devices are commonly used in building automation, smart energy, healthcare, home automation, and industrial automation applications. Radio frequency applications operate over wireless private radio networks and often operate over the 2.4 GHz band or 900 MHz bands. They were designed for data acquisition applications between a host and remote sensors. RF modems are set up with a software utility 
and support peer-to-peer -peer or multi-point topologies. You can use our RF modems with computers, controllers, and our I-7000 RS-485, M-7000 Modbus RTU, and TM series Modbus RTU products. SST900B operates over the 900 MHz band, supports peer-to-peer -peer and multi-point topologies, and RS-485 and Modbus RTU devices. In this picture here, you can see a PC or controller like the XP8041 or IP8441 can be connected to an SST900B RF modem and it can communicate wirelessly to I.O. modules or I.O. racks if another SST900B RF modem is connected to them and is configured to be in the same network. If an environment has a lot of Wi-Fi networks and Zigbee devices, 2.4 GHz devices may not work well if added, so 900 MHz devices would be better since they would have less interference in the wireless band. RF modems are being used in applications like fleet management, automatic meter reading, remote monitoring, and control systems. Antennas can help to extend the communication distance for Zigbee and RF modems. We provide antennas that can communicate up to several kilometers. We have directional and omnidirectional antennas. Omnidirectional antennas support communication across an oval area, and directional antennas need to be pointed at each other to work. As you amplify the wireless signal, the signal falls out of CE compliance. So if you need CE compliance, you may want to use Zigbee networks with repeaters or the cellular network to get the signal across greater areas. Control and monitoring software like Free Easy Data Logger can be used on a PC and can be used to set up a small control and monitoring system so you can see the status of I.O., log data, or see a trend on the screen which allows the I.O. status over time. If a PC is connected to a Zigbee host converter or SST type RF modem, Easy Data Logger software will be able to communicate with I.O. modules that are connected to Zigbee slave converters, Zigbee I.O. modules, or SST RF modems. Free Easy Data Logger supports up to 64 I.O. tags and can send email or SMS alarms based on conditions, like when a temperature level is above a desired range. It can log data and show a trend graph of the data over time. You can also use gauges and buttons to see a graphical representation of the data on a screen. It also supports one web camera in case you wanted to see live video footage of your actual application. An advanced version is available that supports more channels, more email alarms, and more web cameras. SCADA software can be used with wireless networks for more advanced applications that may need to support multiple users, generate reports, use recipes, and animated graphics. SCADA software offers web publishing capabilities for remote access through a web browser. Different users of SCADA software can have different permissions and can also have access to different areas of the system. Administrator users, for example, could have access to make changes and operator users could see the status of a system. SCADA software can generate customized reports, and you can also configure the system with print buttons so you can print customized reports out or save them as a PDF file for later use. Indusoft supports multi-languages, so you can easily change the language in your system. For example, you can create the system in English, and you can click a button and change all of the content in your system to Spanish. Cellular networks are radio networks that communicate through cell site communication towers that are placed in service areas in shaped cells. Cellular networks allow for communication over a larger area. A cellular device can communicate back to a computer over an internet network across the globe. We offer 2G and 3G devices and are certified for use with AT&T networks which use a SIM card and a data plan from a cellular provider. 2G stands for Second Generation Wireless Telephone Technology, 
which provided digital encryption in comparison to the first generation analog based mobile telecommunications. 3G or third generation mobile telecommunications technology offers faster information transfer rates of at least 200 kilobits per second. The G4500 cellular based wireless controller can be programmed in C language and has digital inputs, digital outputs, and analog inputs on board. It also has RS-232, RS-485, and Ethernet ports for communication with different devices. It is available with a GPS option for applications like fleet tracking systems. G4500 is being used in applications like remote monitoring and vehicle tracking. Devices like I.O. modules can be connected to the G4500 through the RS-485 port and the status of the I.O. can be seen from a remote location. A control program running in G4500 allows for implementing logic. It can be connected to a PC and a server program like Indusoft SCADA software on a PC can be configured to work with G4500. Cellular modems can be connected to controllers or PCs and can allow remote monitoring of machines and devices through the cellular network. They use a SIM card for cellular communication and are available for use with the 2G and 3G networks. They're set up with a software utility. GPS versions are available for mobile type of applications. Cellular modems are being used in electrical in electric vehicle charging stations. They are connected to ViewPack touchscreen controllers inside of charge pumps. The ViewPacks are also connected to Wi-Fi converters so they can wirelessly communicate with vehicles to get the charge information. An I7540DWF Wi-Fi to CAN converter connected to the vehicle and a Wi-Fi converter connected to the ViewPack controller allows the charge pump to know when the vehicle is done being charged. A text message is sent to the owner of the vehicle when it's done charging. <laughs> Ticket management systems with cellular modems are being used in transportation systems like metro railways and buses. LP8441 Linux-based programmable automation controllers are being used in buses. A card reader, IP camera, and printer is connected to the controller. A passenger boards the bus and brushes their card against the card reader. Their image is taken and stored in the controller for security. If they have a valid passport, the ticket is printed for the passenger to give to the bus driver. GT201 RS-232 cellular modems allow for information from all the buses in the system to get sent back wirelessly through the cellular network back to an administrative center. Intelligent SMS controllers have I.O. on board and are being used for remote monitoring and messaging for vending, slot, and gaming machines. They can be configured to send text message alarms out when a machine is full of money, is empty, or needs to be serviced. You can also send out text messages to a machine for status. They are set up with a free software utility and have counters, a real-time clock, and can be password protected. GPRS data servers like GT540 have I.O. on board and allow connected Modbus RTU-based devices to communicate back to a remote system over the Internet through the cellular network. GT541 is an intelligent multi-port serial to GPRS gateway that allows you to link RS-232 and RS-485 devices to cellular GPRS networks so your computer can access them as if they were directly connected. It uses the 2G cellular network. GPRS data servers like GT540 are configurable and can allow software on a PC to communicate with remote Modbus RTU based devices connected to GT540 through the internet over the cellular network. They also have one analog input, two digital outputs, and six digital inputs on board. They can send email alarms based on configured high and low alarm levels. M2M RTU Center is software we provide that allows SCADA or other programs on a PC 
like Easy Data Logger, to easily interface with remote devices through our GPRS data server devices like GT540 or G4500. It's an RTU series management tool that supports up to 128 GPRS RTU based devices. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to type them into uh, the chat box and I can answer any questions. And at the end, I'll answer all the questions. GT540P is a GPRS data server with a GPS function and is being used for GPS vehicle tracking systems. You can configure the system to show the location on a PC over the internet with SCADA or custom software. 2G and 3G versions are available. Wi-Fi communication operates over the 2.4 GHz band. Many devices communicate over Wi-Fi, like computers, smartphones, tablet computers, digital music players, data acquisition modules, and printers. Wi-Fi bridge devices like WF2571 can allow computers to wirelessly communicate with PLCs or other devices with Ethernet communication over the Wi-Fi network. They support WEP, WPA, and WPA2 wireless security. Infrared devices can communicate for short distances of about 6 meters. Infrared remote controls use light and require line of sight to operate a destination device. IR210 is a universal learning remote device that allows you to wirelessly control up to 6 infrared devices from your PC or PLC over Modbus RTU communication. In this picture here you can see uh, there's a touchpad and a PLC and a PC and a pack and any of these devices can be connected to the IR210 infrared learning remote module over RS232 or RS485 and then on the right you can see different kind of devices that can be turned on or off over infrared communication uh, like a TV, a Blu-ray player, air conditioner, projector, things like that and you can have those the commands that control those devices you can have them stored inside of the Modbus RTU slave device and you can configure the Modbus devices on the left to turn those devices on and off okay in case anybody has any questions or anything I can answer those at this time Okay, um, so I see, I see um, somebody asked, can we use this technology with a custom PC application like .NET made by um, yourself? Yes, you can use, just like the Easy Data Logger software, that one is a .NET type of application um, developed by ICP DAS, and you can also develop your own and you can interface with different kinds of equipment like that. And then if you run your own .NET type of application on a PC, you can also run M2M RTU Center on the same PC, and then that way it's going to be easy for you to interface with the different equipment. Any other questions? Okay, so we have another question. What, what is there um, a temperature monitoring solution with the GPS cellular device? Um, so for temperature monitoring, um, like there's different options for that. Uh, for a cellular-based solution, for example, with the GT540, if you had connected like an M7018 module over the RS485 bus, if you connected that to the GT540, then you could, from your PC, you can have easy data logger, and you can see the temperature 
on the PC, or if you had SCADA software like Indusoft running on the PC, you could also do that to set up a cellular-based solution. If you wanted a GPS device, then you would want to use the GT540P. Um, let's see, that's right here. And so the GT540P, that one can be out in the field, and you could also, on the RS-485 bus, for example, you can connect a M7018. For, it's a thermocouple input module that communicates over Modbus RTU. Then on the PC, you can have Indusoft SCADA software, and you can see the um, use something like Google Maps API, and then you'd be able to set up a temperature and GPS cellular-based monitoring solution. Um, RTU is like remote terminal units, so in this picture you can see that the uh, the remote terminal units are over here, like G4500, it's providing cellular communication, and these Modbus RTU devices are connected to it, and you can actively push the data and service it in the, um, the server. Um, so some differences between KingView and Easy Data Logger. Basically, um, KingView, um, Easy Data Logger is for small systems, and it's for uh, up to 64 tags. The free Easy Data Logger supports up to 64 tags. The advanced Easy Data Logger supports up to 1,024. And um, the KingView supports advanced things like report generation. Uh, the standard easy data logger doesn't report any, uh, doesn't really let you customize reports and things like that. KingView lets you use like ActiveX components and, and different kinds of scripting. Um, easy data logger just supports basic C type of scripting, but like with KingView, in case you wanted to make some reports and you wanted to have a button and you can click the button and print out the report or save the report or email the report. There's a lot more customizable type of features with KingView. Uh, KingView also supports multi-user level permissions and users and it also uh, has an option where you can publish it to the web so Easy Data Logger doesn't have those kind of features. Let's see. Um, about the 9, it says there's a question, are the 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz license free and to the correct standards in all countries? Um, so yes, um, they are license free, so you don't need to buy a license to use them. You might want to check if you're going to use them in, in any other country than the U.S., then you should look into it to, to see if your particular country requires any kind of licensing agreements. We only know about the licensing agreements for like the U.S. and Taiwan and things like that, but we can help you look into it if you'd like. Um, but basically, um, and you're also saying that uh, New Zealand has a slightly different uh, licensing requirement, so I can look into that for you, Bruce, and, um, and we could talk about that and I'll look into that for you. Um, for plans to interface with the Mac, I have seen our products being interfaced with on a Mac. Uh, the Mac that I saw had a PC simulator application, and so you it was like a virtual machine on the Mac interface and in that way, but um, Ricardo, I will look into that for you about any plans for the future for us to develop applications specifically for the Mac. Um, Jason, maybe can you type your application again, your question again? I only got a piece of it. Oh, okay. I think you're just correcting the question. <laughs> okay, um, Shakar. Um, if yes, which brands can we replace for such units? Um, 
as far as like the competition for for these devices, um, I'm going to have to get back to you to find a complete list. But there's many other kind of companies. You could probably could just do a Google search and look for like M2M RTU or um, maybe Modbus RTU uh, cellular, and that might pull up a a long list of different kinds of devices that are similar. Um, so I'll also send you the slides. I'll send everybody that attended the, a copy of these slides for your future reference. And if you have any questions or anything like that that you didn't think of and uh, at the moment and you have them later, please feel free to contact me anytime and, and I can help you. Um, thank you so much for attending and um, hope we can help you in the future. Thank you. Oh, and um, also, I'm going to send you all an email uh, with this presentation, and then maybe you can answer a few survey questions that I'm going to list. Thank you. Bye-bye.